Here with me is Felix Okech from World Food Program. I have Stella Suga from Filmade and Philip Dinga Pakja as we continue to have conversation on the effects of the climate to the refugees. And now I'll come to you, Stella, now. When it comes to issues to do with, with uh, communication, yeah, we know we, we've had issues to do with the drought, there have um, issues to do with El Nino that, that we've just been told we should expect. How should we package that information to make sure that Kenyans know what is coming and they're able to prepare for that better? Um, when it comes to, to communication, our experience has really shown us that, first of all, where the, the wealth of knowledge lies is the communities that have been affected. So for, for us, the, the method is really to go to the people. If you're talking about Turkana, if you're talking about refugees, what are the experiences that they have? How were they displaced? From where were they displaced? Understanding how their history has shown them how to resolve to get solutions to some, some of those issues. Mm -hmm. And some of the things, for example, that relates to a food security. These communities actually know the indigenous foods that they've been able to, to plant that adopt to those difficult environments uh, around the arid and semi-arid land. So I think the most critical part of communicating is first of all, where the wealth of the knowledge lies, which is the community that has actually been affected. And from there, you're able to capture issues such as language, the sensitivities of the communities about how they want to be talked about. When you talk about also dignifying the person, is that if you let them to speak for themselves, they own that. But if somebody from outside is, is owning that conversation, then who, you know, it's not representative of who they are, their culture, their values. So it's really keeping the conversation uh, from, from that angle, issues of language, and capturing, I, I think, um, you know, we, in, the, in this sector, we are very um, fond of talking about vulnerable communities, women and youth and people like that, capturing their voices, because otherwise they are left out of the conversation. And if you talk about uh, women, obviously, as, as a woman and from experience, they're the ones really who are at the fore when we're talking about if there's no food in the home, who is most concerned is always the mother. They're the ones who have to think about cooking, methods of cooking. If you talk about also in the refugee camps where we are giving sometimes less rations and you still have to think about nutrition, how can you optimize that little basket to take care of the little ones and to ensure that they are able to to grow in a level of, of health mm -hmm. and all these issues are really uh, related so i think in terms of communication is really st very much centered about about the the individuals about the community and then it comes uh, it comes up the ladder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'll come to you philip now um all these issues around climate change basically it's about what is brought on the table and how we action that so that it makes sense. It is not just a question of having policies that are just gathering dust on the shelves. Because COP27, we came with policies, they have not been met up to date. So then how do we make sure that these policies, these agreements that are signed, actually do make sense and are followed through? Is it about time that we got into making sure that we sign policies that are legally binding? <coughs> Interesting question again. Um, and the way we look at it, um, um, from a poli policy perspective, um, as, as Stella has put it uh, nicely, is how do you link um, communities to have a voice, um, to have a decision? Um, and what she felt short of mentioning is um, the stories from those communities, because they are personal, uh, they live the experiences from those communities. And so, um, unfortunately, at times you find the discourse um, is um, embedded in protocol, um, because the climate negotiations take time. For example, if it's um, you mentioned about COP27, um, the establishment of the loss and damage facility. Uh, so that's um, uh, seen as a positive step, um, especially for vulnerable countries, developing countries. Um, but now you see uh, in the setting up of that fund, it's going to take um, quite a bit of engagement with the transitional committee, for example, at high level, at national level. And so the policy process sometimes um, is, is stemmed and, and, and pegged on bureaucracies and protocols that take, take a bit of time um, and a lot of agreements. But over to your question on how do we bring policy to life and it's three initiatives. So for example, um, the uh, PACJA has an initiative on uh, climate uh, security. 
is simply looking at how climate change affects security issues. And so if you bring the refugees in the whole, um, in the whole of this conversation, then you see the forced migration due to limited resources or resource-based conflicts and on issues of peace and security, then it becomes a, um, an integral part of having an initiative that allows people to come on board to speak to a common agenda. But beyond that, to also link that to policy and say, for example, uh, we're talking about peace and security and what's been the gap in this uh, um, in, in the sense of peace and security for example um, and migration um, <coughs> and forced migration it could be um, the issue of inclusion uh, maybe um, the, uh, the groups youth groups are not being involved in that in that sense or women groups are not being involved so how do we look at that whole architecture and say what voice do you have in terms of um, the safeguarding issues for women, for example? So it links to policy now to bring it to life so that we're able to connect um, on three levels. At global level, uh, because we subscribe to the UNFCCC processes and Kenya is, um, um, has ratified, uh, for example, the Paris Agreement. But at regional level, we speak as African. We say this is our common position. So that's what the agenda that we drive in influencing policy at regional level so that we speak. So Africa Climate Summit is a big part of what we do to say that as an African, as an African position as civil society this is what we want to see in policy but beyond that I think the most critical part will be to link it down up to the local level mm -hmm. uh, from national level just go to local level through the national determined contributions through uh, the county integrated development plans or any other plans that are local so what are we doing at the yeah. at the world level at the very basic grassroots because that's that's where for example, the integration of refugees and host communities come into play. Mm -hmm. How do we engage on, um, on in terms of nature-based uh, taking care of our, our natural resources, our mm -hmm. energy demands and supply, for example. And so our work is to influence and shape policies, but also to connect it from global level. And really, um, I like what Stella was saying, in communicating to simplify the message so that the common man can mm -hmm. also be plugged into the conversation. Mm -hmm. and now, Felix, we talk about refugees. And as we speak, even in the country right now, there's a time when two communities are fighting over pasture, and pasture is food for the animals. Others are literally fighting for land where they can grow their food and eat. So as uh, WFP and the stresses that you have to, to feed uh, immigrants, as, as, as we call them, uh, to feed refugees, <coughs> how important is their voice in the discussion that is happening in Nairobi today? Because these are real people who need their voices to be heard. So as we have this conversation or, uh, in Nairobi, what is your message to the dignitaries, to the negotiators who will be sitting in these rooms to come up with the Nairobi Declaration? I think the message is one, and uh, my, my colleague Philip has, has sort of mentioned it, is I think we need to, to work on a better word to make, democratize these conversations. You know, uh, move, move it out of KICC. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the conversations could have been had at different levels, but um, I guess, yeah. So the the most important thing is is the local community aware of what's going on, mm -hmm. and in terms of the policies and the discussion which are being had, how does that relate to him or her? Mm -hmm. So post this and post the declarations, I think the most important thing is how do we translate that to the local level, you can simplify it. I think like Stella was mentioning, what conversations do we have post this? And um, um, I think there are opportunities. I think in terms of certain steps that the government has taken on a number of issues related to refugees is going in the right direction. Uh, I, I believe we're all aware that there's a new regulatory framework around the refugees, uh, the Refugee Act 2021, which a paradigm shift from the previous one which I think allows for opportunities for engagements around integration, where host plus local can, can work together. There are issues around the environment that are covered uh, within that and actually being incorporated in uh, the Sherika plan mm -hmm. that is being developed to change the refugee camps into settlements. So there's some other pieces of work that are ongoing, but then now we need to look at the declarations that come out of the African Climate Summit and see how do we incorporate that into those discussions at the very local level so that the local lady in Turkana and the refugee also in Turkana has an idea of what is being discussed related to the climate, how that impacts on them, and what is their role in addressing the issue that we are seeing. Uh, because, you know, everybody can do their, their bit in a small way. If we say that El Nino is coming and we yes. say we need the community to come together to fix these trenches, 
Why? Because the floods are coming and we need to get this work done. So in a small way, everybody can play a role. Mm -hmm. So democratize the, the conversations, take them to the very local level post the declarations. And I agree with you, Felix. And yes, indeed, this conversation continues. Africa Climate Summit is continuing in Nairobi as delegates 